How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, and this is part 16. Cleaning up the link arms and the reversing lever. And here they are in their raw state. These are the rough castings for the link arms and the reversing lever itself, which is in gunmetal. These castings are very rough and they're going to take quite a lot of time and effort to clean up. When I sit back and look at this job, it really would be very easy to just use some mild steel for this job and just fabricate these parts. But no, these are the official Stuart Models castings and I'm going to use them come what may. And the first thing I'm going to do is to look at the integrity of the castings to make sure they're not full of sand or blowholes. It very soon became apparent that this sanding belt is past its best. So I changed it for a new one and now I can continue and actually remove some metal. And I need to remove quite a lot of metal as you can see. Next to this belt sander, and in between this one and the vertical 1 inch belt sander, is a pot of water. And I use this for quenching parts that I'm working on, to just keep them cool. Because as I've mentioned many times, I don't like to wear gloves. I like to know where my fingers are at all times. By frequently quenching these parts in the water, they stay cool enough to handle really. There's a piece of this casting sticking out in the middle. So what I'm doing is putting it in the vise. And to hold this casting securely in the vise, I'm using a piece of scrap bar in between the two outer parts so I don't damage them. And once I finally get the bar in position, I can tighten the vise and the casting is held securely. And then I can use a file. It's not as easy as using the belt sander because I have to do the work. But at least by using a file, I'm not going to inadvertently remove too much metal from the wrong part of the casting. All I'm trying to do is get this middle part level with the rest. Because if I do it on the belt sander, I cannot see how much metal I'm removing. But by doing it with a file, I can see exactly how much metal I'm removing and where I'm removing it from. I get most of the metal that I want to remove out of the way and I can go back to the belt sander to finish it off. Plus, of course, a bit of gentle physical exercise never did anyone any harm. Ah, oh, that's better, the part's not rocking about now. It doesn't have that big lump in the middle. And by frequently checking it, I can see how much metal I'm removing. Time now to clean up the other piece, and this is worse than the first one. This is something I do frequently. I use the end of the belt sander, and it's a bit like a file because you can actually see which areas of the metal have been removed by the belt sander. Whereas when you're on the flat part, you have to keep lifting the part up to look at it to make sure that you're removing the correct amount of metal. It's really practice. I've done loads and loads of this over the years. And the more you do it, the better you get at it and you get an instinctive feel for it after a while. One of my favorite pieces of workshop equipment is the one inch belt sander. And once you master the art of using it, you can get a superb finish on the parts. I've just recently bought this new belt sander. The last one I had, I bought in the mid 1980s and it did really well indeed. In fact, I gave it to a friend of mine. It was still basically okay, it needed a new belt. But apart from that, it worked quite well. I just thought I'd treat myself to a new machine. Once you master the technique of using a belt sander, you really can get some amazing results. And this is a medium grit belt. It's not as fierce as the one on the four inch belt sander. And so if I press on hard, it removes metal but if I press on lightly, the part just gets polished by the belt. A very useful tool. I really recommend buying one of these if you haven't done already. I know it's not proper engineering, but I'm not a proper engineer, so that's perfectly okay. My steam engines look okay, and they work well, and that's all I really can do. The hobby of model engineering is very multifaceted. For some people, they just like the machining operations, and other people don't. I'm sort of in the middle, I use the machines to machine where necessary, but there's nothing wrong with using a belt sand to get a good finish. I think it's time to give these parts a rest, I'll come back to them later. This reversing lever is diabolical, I've never seen a casting with as much sprue on it. I got this out of the package very carefully because it was so extremely sharp. Anyway, it's an easy job to get rid of it, and you've got to be very careful with this, if you do it wrong, it ruins the part and it's not going to cost a fortune to replace. As I mentioned in the previous video, if it was the flywheel that cost a lot of money, I would be quite nervous. But if I ruin this, I have the option of either A, fabricate it, 
or B, contact Stuart Models, pay them some money and get another casting. This casting's cleaning up okay really, and this is part of the hobby for me. As I said earlier, I could fabricate all of these parts, but then it wouldn't be genuine Stuart Model stuff, would it? It would be Keith Appleton's Barstock imitation replica of a Stuart Models casting. So I'm going to persevere with this one, and of course I'm not going to make a mess of it. Back now to cleaning up the link arms, and you will notice on this one there's a chunk out of the corner, so later on, when you see me machining it, don't say, oh, you've knocked a chunk out of the corner because here's the proof. I haven't. It's in the casting, and I'll live with that because it's on the inside, and there's only you and I will ever know it's been there when I put the engine together. After a bit of work, well, quite a lot of work, they went from this to this. And there's quite a difference as far as I can see. I'm going to paint the inner part of these castings and leave the outer parts and the top and the end shiny and it will look really good when it's all together with the expansion link in the middle. They still need further cleaning up though in my opinion. I'm using a cutting disc in my small Minicraft drill to remove all the lumps and bumps from the inside edges. Then I'm going to use some JB Weld to smooth it all out. And there's no time like the present. So I'll mix a small amount of JB Weld, and here I'm using it to fill the casting, including filling the chunk that was out of the casting at one end of the rounded part. This clip is running slightly out of sequence. Somewhat miraculously, without you seeing it, I appear to have created holes in the end of the links, and I'll show you how I did that in the next episode. But for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.